Right. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you everything that you don't want to hear, everything that you don't want to know about living in the UK. So you want to make sure that you watch this video till the very end because I'm going to be, in fact, let me tell you what the three things are going to be. The first one is going to be about pay in the UK and taxes. The next one is going to be about childcare children in the UK. Then the third one is going to be about career progression and just working in the UK. So these are three major aspects of that are going to affect your life as an immigrant or as somebody living in the UK. So whether you're already in the UK right now or you're still planning to move to the UK, whether in this life or in your next life, you want to watch this video till the end because you're going to have to hear everything about the UK that you don't want to hear, but that the earlier you hear and you know begin to prepare yourself, the better for you. So let's get started. The first thing is about pay and taxes. So in the UK, um, when you look at the other developed countries that are similar to the UK, pay in the UK is one of the worst. The pay is so, so low. But what I'm going to say is that the UK is very good in terms of branding and just other things. But when it comes to pay, it's just not good enough. I'm going to give you an example. I work as an advanced nurse practitioner right now. I've got a friend in the US, for example, who works as a nurse practitioner. And when I spoke to her and she told me how much she's earning, and I looked at how much I am earning in the UK doing the same job. I was like, girl, shall I still be in this country? Shall I not? But anyway, at the end of the day, there are other reasons why, you know, we still choose to be in the UK. Because, but if pay is one of them, then please, the UK is probably not the right place for you to come. Because if you're, you know, if you're coming to the UK or you're living in the UK, the pay, like I've said, is just not good enough. And then when it comes to taxes, it's even worse so just to put it into perspective if you're earning if you're earning between zero and about twelve thousand five hundred pounds you don't pay any tax at all which is fantastic so everybody gets this tax um bracket that's how kind of the tax is organized if you earn between zero and about twelve thousand seven hundred pounds you're not going to pay any tax at all on that income so it's tax free for everybody but if you earn between say twelve thousand five hundred and 37,000 pounds, you're going to pay 20% on everything that you earn in that bracket. So obviously people like, if you're watching this and you're a nurse or you're a carer or, you know, you're, you're, you're likely going to fall within this bracket, obviously. So you'll be paying 20% taxes on everything that you're going to earn, you know, in the UK while you're working. And then if you're earning between 37,000 and £150,000, you're going to be paying 40%. Mm -hmm. So it goes up to 40%. So from the 20%, it automatically doubles to 40%. But just to put this into perspective, if you're earning, say, 100000 what this means is that your, first, your income between £1 and 12500 is not going to be taxed. Then your income between twelve thousand five hundred and thirty-seven thousand pounds is going to be taxed at twenty percent. It's only the extra income from thirty-seven thousand pounds to one hundred thousand that is going to be taxed at forty percent. The reason I say this is because there's always a misunderstanding, and people think that if you're earning say a hundred thousand, then all of your income is taxed at 40%, but that's not really the case. They're only taxing you for the extra that falls within that tax bracket. Just to, just to make this really clear. And by the way, if you're a returning subscriber to the channel, you're welcome. It's always beautiful to have you. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Keep watching the videos. If you're new, again, it's so beautiful to have you. Such a privilege that you've checked out this video. So please do subscribe. Turn on the notification button as well, just so that you're the first to be notified every time I drop a new video. And I'm somebody who is very passionate about career progression in the UK. So this channel, you're going to find everything that you need about moving to the UK, life in the UK, just living the best life, being able to progress. And I've got a coaching and mentorship program where I support nurses, carers, student nurses with career progression. So you want that senior position, you want that top job, you want that dream job, you know, you're thinking of specializing or 
things like that then i'm your girl make sure you check the description box below to find out more information about my coaching and mentorship program so i'm a nurse as well myself and i work for the nhs currently as an advanced nurse practitioner just in case you know it's your new it's your first time here you're new to the channel and you're wondering oh who is this what's she going on about about career progression so something i'm very 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 passionate about because once you move to the uk that's all good and fine but then what next you know i'm very much interested in that what next which is why i'm doing this video so that you're aware of what the challenges are you're aware of the horrors you know that are going to await you if you're not here yet or if you're already here then yes you'll be going through all these things already so like we're saying about the taxes the taxes are really really high when you look at it that way which means that if you are a carer for example and you're earning twenty thousand pounds yes twenty thousand pounds per year you're going to be paying taxes about four thousand pounds so that leaves you with about sixteen thousand pounds the sixteen thousand pounds if you divide it by 12 months it means that you're going to be earning about one thousand two hundred one thousand three hundred pounds every month look the taxes don't even end there because when you're doing shopping when you're buying groceries when you're you know paying a ticket or you're paying train tickets or you're paying a bus ticket or you're buying food for yourself there are taxes in there as well so you're going to pay so once you're paid your own money you're still going to carry on paying the taxes and it just doesn't end the next thing is that your rent rents are very high in the uk it's not a cheap country obviously we all know that so you're still gonna have to pay rents from that money which look is not a small amount of money and my advice for you is if you can start saving up immediately so you can buy your own house that's the best thing that you can do and buddy if you're enjoying this content make sure that you you know leave a comment below and tell me melvis i will implement all of this and you can like the video as well if you like the content so that I know that you want to see more videos like this and I can do them for you. Because I really only do videos um, that people are asking me, you know, like questions. Oh, Melvis, what about this? Oh, Melvis, what about this? Then I do a video about it. So if you want a video about anything, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Also like the video and I can know that this is something that is of interest to you. And so I can do more of things like that, you know, because I want to be helpful. I want you to succeed i want you to know the things that those of us who came before that we probably didn't know so that you can know those things and be able to improve and be able to achieve your goals quicker because look time doesn't wait for anybody so like we we're saying back to the taxes before i digress so the taxes obviously like we we're saying are very high you're going to have to pay your rent and then there's another tax again so this tv license every you can pay every month or every year it's up to you I have a direct debit for this so i pay it every month so if you have a tv in your house or you have a laptop you have to pay a tax for that which is called tv license if you don't pay you know and people do go around checking if you don't pay you can be given a fine and if you don't pay that fine you can go to prison and yes people do go to prison for not paying that money so you have to pay that money as well every month or every year it's up to you i have a direct debit i pay every month then there's another tax as well. It's called council tax. So with the council tax, um, obviously you're going to be living in a particular area. So how much you pay for your council tax depends on your house, how many people are there and where you're actually living. Um, where I live, for example, I own my house. I pay over £200 every month for council tax, which means that if you were a carer living where I live, for example, and you're paid £1,300 a month, you will have to pay council tax over 200 pounds every single month from that amount of money and you can see how the pay is quickly going down and down and down you know so council tax you have to pay every month again that is mandatory if you don't pay council tax you can go to prison for not paying so yes you do have to pay and again i've got a direct debit for my council tax and i pay this every month it's over 200 pounds every single month and this comes out once you've, you've been paid already so it's not part of the taxes that we're saying about the 20 percent and 40 percent you have to get paid and then you take the money and pay the council tax it's mandatory everybody pays it and the council tax basically it covers like you know even like elderly care you know it covers the police it covers like you know taking your rubbish away and all of these so you have to pay for all of that yourself schools as well that's all part of it 
and then you also have to pay national insurance it's all part of the money that is taken that's for your nhs and you know pension and treatment and health care and everything so when they say that things are actually certain things are free in the uk like health care is it really free it isn't free because you and i are paying for it every single month there's nothing that is free in this country just like anywhere else in life nothing is free so there's no need saying oh healthcare in the uk is free oh you're gonna get this for free you're not paying that free doesn't mean that you don't pay it means that it's free at a point of use i think that's the that's what we should all be saying healthcare in the uk is free at the point of use but you're paying for it you know indirectly in other ways through those taxes and all of that so that's another thing that you're going to be paying for so we've talked about council tax, we've talked about the TV license, we've talked about the fact that obviously rents are really, really high. We don't want to talk about bills because, you know, electricity bill and energy bills and all of that have tripled, um, you know, currently in my house, we're currently paying, I think it's over £200 for gas and electricity. And then there's water bill as well, which is separate. Mm -hmm. And then if you need internet and all of that Wi-Fi, that's another bill that you've got. So when you're looking at all these different things, you see that in the UK, many people are just working to pay their bills. There's no extra income at the end of the month. And in fact, many people are actually not able to pay the bills every single month. And so if you're watching this and you're already in the UK, you need to find more efficient ways of saving more efficient ways of earning and that's why one of the things i'm also very passionate about is starting your own side business mm -hmm. there's nothing better that you can do for yourself than starting a side business when you start a side business for yourself it is the most tax efficient way as well i don't want to get into too, too much details about this i'm not an accountant but i'm going to do a video about this so if you're interested in content like this leave a comment below subscribe to the channel hit the notification button because you want to be the first to be notified when i drop a video about this and yes i do have my own business that i've started in the uk so it's very very tax efficient you know when you have your own business because as a business owner there are many incentives that you're given by the government to make sure that your business is running because obviously when you have a business there are extra taxes that you're paying you're likely going to be employing people um which is good obviously for the economy so they give you those um those incentives for taxes and you know it's just a really good way that you can do to manage your money even better and to make your money work better for you so if you're considering this you should get in contact with me you know i can brainstorm with you on some side business that you can start especially if you're a healthcare professional and you're thinking about a healthcare related business you want to get in touch so that we get started because look the earlier you start the better because like we've said your pay is going to just be drained and sucked into all of these different things, which is why you're going to end up working 100 hours a week. You don't want that. You really don't want that. So that's about pay. You know, that's about pay. That's about taxes. Yes, we've said that the tax is very high. We've said that, yes, the, the, the pay is very, very low. And if you're an immigrant like myself, you're likely going to be in a low paid job. For example, nursing, you know, being a carer. These are low paid jobs in the UK, which is why. It's difficult to find people in this country that are interested in doing the job anyway because the pay is just not enough. It's also the reason why um, carer jobs, for example, have been added to the shortage occupation list because, you know, the pay is just so low that it wouldn't qualify for visa sponsorship otherwise, which again is why they are reliant on foreign workers to come and do these jobs because if you're in the UK, many people are just not interested in doing these jobs for, you know, because of the low pay. So that's pay and taxes. The next thing we're going to talk about now is children. So whether you've got children or not, you want to watch this because maybe you will have children in the future. Maybe you know people who have children. Maybe there's an iota of, you know, thought in you thinking, okay, I, I don't have children now, but maybe at some point I will do. So you want to watch this as well and keep on listening to what I've got to say about what you don't want to know about the UK, but that's the bitter truth about living and working in this country so child care in fact child care is going to be one of the most expensive things that you have if you imagine about the rents the bills you think is bad no if you've got small children it's going to be a lot worse especially if your children are still small your children are still young you know if you're working for example in healthcare with unsociable hours how are you going to manage you know your children 
and everything else. Many nurseries, for example, don't open until like maybe 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock or 7.30, depending on where you live. But if you're a healthcare professional, your shift is probably going to start at 7 o'clock or 7.30, which means even if you're able to pay for the nursery, you still need somebody to be able to drop your child there or in school. You know, because if your child is starting school at nine o'clock and you're working a day shift, for example, a nurse or a carer, if your day shift is starting, say, I don't know, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, how do you drop your child in school by nine o'clock? And if your child is going to school at nine o'clock and they're finishing at three o'clock, you still need to pick them up from school at three. How many healthcare jobs finish work by three o'clock? I don't, you know. So how do you then pick up the child from school at three? So you can see how the challenges begin to build on top of each other, how life, you know, the work-life balance is so destabilized in the UK. You don't realize that until you're physically here. So if you've got small children, it is now easy. And then the worst part is that the school is going to be reliant on you as a parent to teach your children. What do I mean? So the school gives like homework every single day. You have to read. Not only do you have to read with the child, but you've got to also complete a diary to say what you've read, what the child has understood, how it went, you know, the new words and all of that. And if you're not teaching your child, they're not going to be learning. They're not going to be progressing. They're not going to be able to thrive. And look, many of us that come to the UK that are immigrants say that we're coming to the UK because we want to have a better future for our children. So... Don't think that the school is going to be teaching your child. Mm -mm. You are going to be told to teach your child at home. My daughter, for example, there are certain things that she comes from school. She's like, oh, mommy, ask just so that you need to teach us about this. And I'm like, I've got no idea what this is. But yes, you have to find out. It's your duty, it's your responsibility because the child is going to be assessed. And again, you don't want your child to go to school. They've got no idea about the homework that they were meant to do and all of these, even simple things like dressing up. You know, if they have a day that they have to dress up in school, you need to make, it's a lot of effort. You need to make sure that you find out, you know, what the child wants to dress up as. You need to find out, you know, what the theme is about. You need to make sure that you're aware that they're dressing up that day because you don't want your child to turn up, you know, in school with uniform and it was supposed to be a dress up day because you're just going to be like, oh, why didn't you dress up? And they will ask you that. So it is quite a lot to think about. Child care alone, the cost ridiculous the costs are so high in fact just to put this into perspective i worked in one of the hospitals you know as an nhs staff and when i had my daughter i was on maternity leave when i decided to return to work and i actually completed um and my employer said to me oh melvis you know as you're returning to work we can actually give you subsidized childcare because you're a member of staff i was like oh that's so amazing it was my first child i had no experience with any of these i didn't know how much childcare had you know cost in this country i've never even bothered about it, but then I found myself I had to bother so I completed the form and they said to me if you're not sure what days you want your child to come just put Monday to Friday so that it's covered and then whatever days you choose once you've decided then at least we'll make sure that those days are available so I ticked Monday to Friday and I got a bill of almost two thousand pounds as a subsidi subsidized member of staff having my child in the in the hospital nursery five days a week it was almost two thousand pounds for the five days and look that's not even the fun bit the most interesting part of it is that i obviously working as a nurse at that point i was earning one thousand eight hundred pounds and you know because it's part of the school the, the the hospital where i worked they were meant to be taking the the nursery fees out of my pay every month which means that if if I'm earning $1,800 per month and my child's nursery fees are £1,800 per month, actually, I'm not earning anything. In fact, at the end of the day, I'll, I'll, I'll probably be owing the trust, the hospital, some money. How do I pay my rent, my bills and all the other taxes that we've spoken about? And you can again see how everything quickly escalates. And needless to tell you that I had to resign from that job because the childcare I just couldn't manage. I had to leave the job. So again, you're going to have to make very difficult decisions as a parent. If you're not in the UK yet and you're watching this, these are some of the things you're going to experience if you've got small children. It should also help you to decide, you know, about the children. What should you do? What should you not? And also, where you live is going to influence the type of schools that your children go to. Many of us always say, oh, I want to move to the UK because I'm going to give my children a better future. My children are going to go to the best schools. Mm -mm. 
if you're just in the UK, it doesn't mean that your children are going to the best schools. It depends on where you're living. Because many of us tend to find the cheapest places to live. And look, the cheapest places to live are not always the best places. There are some of the worst places in the UK. Yes, yes, some of the worst places. Because when you're living in a place that is very expensive, generally, the facilities in those areas are better as well. People there are more affluent. They've got better jobs. They're probably business owners. Um, the schools are better. They've got fewer people in the classes. Because look, you cannot, your child cannot attend a school outside of where you live. Which means that if you're living in a cheaper or poorer area, your child is going to be going to that school, you know, with people that are obviously similar to the demographic of that particular area. Hmm. Look, if the, if the crime rate in that place is high, you know, that's a circle of people that you're going to be interacting with and all of that. So you need to be really careful. You need to be very strategic. And that's why for me, I always focus a lot on career progression. I cannot stress enough the importance of trying to uplift yourself, the importance of trying to change your status, both financially and, you know, your because it's not easy. If you're only relying on having to do extra hours to earn more, you can see how everything can quickly escalate because if you're doing extra hours, what about your children? If you haven't got children, you may be thinking, oh yeah, it's all right. But the time is coming when you find yourself in that situation. And that's why when you're thinking about career progression, especially you're watching this now and you're single, you haven't got children yet, this is the best time for you to focus on yourself so that by the time you're having those children, you're already top high within the career ladder. And when you're senior as well, there's more flexibility when you're a senior, you know, senior person working anywhere, you know, because I know people that, in fact, I know um, many senior nurses even that rush out of where they work, pick up their child, drop the child at home, go back to work. They do that. But if you're up and five nurse or you're up and six nurse, you cannot be like, oh, I'm just going to rush, pick my child and come back. You cannot do that. Nobody's going to let you do that. They'll be like, oh, no, you're needed here. That's going to be professional conduct and this and that. Yeah. But the people who are very senior, I've seen people do that. You know, they're like, oh, I'm just going to pick my child up. I'll be back in five minutes. And obviously they don't take long because they probably don't live far from where they're working. And then they pick up the child and come back. They can do that. But the rest of us, you know, if you're a junior nurse, you're not able to do that. So when you're progressing, it's not only the fact that you're going to earn more money. It's the fact that career progression comes with more flexibility, more opportunities and more advantages that you don't see until you get to that position. It's not only the fact that you earn more, which is obviously fantastic, but it's the fact that you can actually work fewer hours to have more time for, say, your kids, for example. Because if you don't have money to pay somebody to care for your child, then you need to do that yourself. If you don't have money to teach your children, then you need to, you know, if you don't have time to teach your children, then you need to be able to pay somebody to do that. And that's where private tuition comes in. Many colleagues actually in the UK, many people in the UK are having to pay private classes for their children to attend. And the reason for this is that the best schools require so much effort. If your child is just mediocre, they're not going to make it to the best schools. So simply being in the UK physically doesn't mean that your child is going to have the best education. No, they will not. The level of effort that you need as a parent, the level of effort that you need to put for your child to excel academically in the UK and be able to thrive, it's a lot. And many people, many people because they're in low paying jobs are not able to dedicate that time for the kids, which means that your kids are likely going to be left alone, you know, as in, even if you're home, you're probably back from a night shift, you're knackered, you know, maybe you've done six shifts on a row, you're exhausted, you're broken, and you don't have time. And if you don't have time to dedicate to those kids, what is going to happen to them? Do you think they're going to have the brightest future that they can have in the UK? I don't know, but I leave it to you. Leave a comment, you know, in the comment section, um, what you feel about this. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, again, do hit subscribe, turn on the notification button, because I know these are difficult conversations to be had. I know you're starting thinking, oh my goodness, is this UK still worth it? Is it not? Look, Career progression is the only way out of this so that you can earn more without actually working 100 hours every week because you want to have time for those little kids. You want to have time to dedicate to them. And then the next thing about kids is extracurricular activities. Look, if you if you want your child to attend, you know, to have extracurricular activities, you need to pay for them. Not only do you need to pay, but you need to be able to take them to those activities. I'm going to give you an example. My children, 
they have piano every Wednesdays, they have swimming every Thursdays, and they have ballet every Saturday. These alone, these three activities, cost in excess of £200 every month to take two children, you know, for two children to attend these activities. And the biggest thing about it is not only the financial cost, but it's also the time you know, the time implication to take them to those activities and back because those activities are all done during the daytime, which means that if you're working, for example, you're not able to take those children there, which means that these activities, they help children, you know, they have other interactions. It's not just school. They're learning other skills. Swimming, for example, is an essential skill that everybody should rightfully have. But if you don't take your children swimming to learn how to swim, they wouldn't know how to swim. Because unlike the US, for example, where people have pools in their houses, it's not the case in the UK. In the UK, you know, you need to take your child to go and learn how to swim. And that takes a lot of time. And swimming is like 30 minutes. Generally, it's about 30 minutes per session, which means that if you need to prepare the child before, take them over there. When they finish, take them home. All of that can take about two hours or so, depending on where you live, how far um, the the, the swimming is from your obviously i'm giving swimming as an example you may want your child to do football you know many of the boys do football um so it just depends on you but if you look at the, the time that it takes to organize these activities you have to you know you can't be working and doing it all at the same time if you're having to work six shifts a week when will you take your children for these activities and you can see how everything can quickly run out of hand and you don't want to keep children stuck at home 24-7 or just relying on the school because the school itself is also relying on you to teach your children at home. So it is a very, you, the system in the UK is very difficult. And if you don't treat your children well, you don't have good childcare, the social services will take the children away. That's even worse. They will take the children away from you, you know, and then you don't have, you don't have the children anymore. So you need to be very careful. If you're moving to the UK or you're already in the UK, you need to make sure that, you know, you're checking out how you can be efficient. You can make friends with other moms within your area. If you want to share childcare together, you can do that. I've done a whole video about um, the most efficient childcare options in the UK. Because I was talking about a nurse, an overseas nurse who actually took her child over with her to work. So again, you want to make sure that, you know, you're looking at, all the best opportunities that are available. Then well, let's talk about the, the third aspect, career progression. So you can see how if you're in a low paid job, you're not able to afford your bills, you're struggling with bills, rent and all that. You're struggling with childcare because probably you haven't got family in the UK. You know, if you're an overseas nurse, you may not have family. Um, you can see how everything quickly escalates and negatively affects your career progression, you know, because you need to progress to earn more and get out of this cycle. But at the same time, everything that is going on is not very conducive to support you to progress. So it's like the chicken and egg situation of what comes first and what comes second. So you need to make sure that you're really strategic. You need to make sure that career progression from day one as you step foot in the UK, you need to start working on that. And like I said, I've got a coaching and mentorship program where I focus on career progression, supporting you so they can grow, you can thrive. If you're having interviews, I can support you one-on-one -on -one with interview preparation or go through um, possible questions. Um, you know, we have live sessions where we can talk about any of your concerns, your worries, how you can, you know, just the best opportunities. Because look, if you're new, especially to the UK, you're not going to know everything all in the same day. So some of us have taken years and years that we've been in the UK to learn these things from the best. You know, we've implemented many of them. There are things that work. There are things that don't. Nothing is going to work for everybody, but look, there are things that you can be more efficient to make them work for you. So, you know, career progression is something that it's going to be a struggle. If you're an immigrant, especially, it's a huge struggle. First of all, the cultural shock, the fact that culturally you're probably, you know, you're not going to be familiar with the system in the UK. You know, you need a lot of time to learn that as well. Again, if you're part of my coaching program, I walk you through all of that there are online courses on there that you can access a course at your convenience depending on the membership plan that you have you can either have all of the course at once or you can have a module every month and it walks you through everything you need to know to progress to specialize you know to just become the best version of yourself while you're in the uk you need a community of 
you know, not only like-minded people, but of success-driven, ambitious people around you. Because otherwise, with all the challenges that come with being in the UK, it's not going to be easy. You know, if you're a carer, for example, yes, it's okay that you've come to the UK as a carer, but actually, you need to keep progressing. Is that how you want to retire? Do you want to do something else? Because there are so many opportunities that you can grow. There are so many opportunities that you can excel into. But if you don't know what those opportunities are, you know, you're just going to think, oh my goodness, it's probably what's best for me. You know, I feel stuck. No, you don't need to feel stuck. There's a lot of support out there. Put yourself out there. Don't, don't kind of close yourself in a bottle. You need to be open. You know, if you need support, go for it. Because I can tell you that the more you invest in your own personal and career growth, the more successful you're going to be. The more you invest in your own personal career growth, the more successful you're going to be. Again, if at this point you're still watching, I appreciate the fact that you're here. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do hit subscribe. Turn on that notification button. You know, let me know in the comment section what you would like me to talk about next. Because, like I say, you know, I want to do videos that are relevant for you. I want to do videos that are helpful for you. I want to do videos that you find, um, you know, that add value to you add value to you but if you like the content that i make and you want to work um you know in a closer level with me you know so that we find strategies that are personalized to your specific circumstances then you should consider contacting me and being part of my private coaching program because it is in that program that i can support you um you know with those you know because accountability is a big issue. It's not just having the information. It's not knowing what you should do. It's actually taking that first step and going for it. That is the biggest challenge that, you know, many people face. Is the, yes, I'm going to succeed. Yes, I'm going to transition from a carer to a nursing associate. Yes, I want to transition from a staff nurse to a species nurse. Yes, I want to become an advanced nurse practitioner. But if you're alone... The likelihood is that you're going to keep on procrastinating. But if you're part of my program, for example, then I can follow up with you and see, you know, how you're progressing, what's going on. You can hop on the weekly live sessions that we have. You know, we have live sessions every week. You can hop on, on those anytime that you can. And, you know, just debrief, listen to other members of the program as well. Get advice from other people. Just listen to, you know, it is so enriching. Just a place where you can talk about your challenges without feeling judged, you know, with people that understand your situation, with people that have been in your same situation and with people that are, are in your same situation. There's nothing that beats that, you know, there is nothing that beats that because we've all been in that situation. We're all in the situation. And so we have a good understanding of, you know, the strategies that can support you to move. So all these um, challenges that we've talked about living in the UK, being in the UK. Obviously, there are lots of advantages being in the UK, but there's always two sides to any coin. Um, there are also many challenges, you know, that come with being in this country. Like I've said, there's taxes, the pay is low, taxes are quite high. When you're paid, you still need to pay so many other taxes. And then with childcare, it's very expensive. It's barely enough time. You need to be the one to teaching you, you know, you need to be the one teaching um, your child because the school just gives a lot of homework for parents to do and then you know career progression is very difficult because of all the reasons you know the culture the integration looking after kids you don't know the different pathways there's quite a lot to think about there is a lot to think about and that's why i say the uk isn't for the faint-hearted but if you follow the right path if you have the right people around you if you get this right support you know, you get a mentor that can hold your hand, support you through that journey. It just makes it that little bit um, easier for you to go through. And you get those strategies that can enable you to get there quicker. Because if you can achieve something in two years, you don't want to take 10 years. If you can achieve something in 10 years, you don't want to take 20 years to do that. Because time is what we cannot buy. Time is the most you know, is the most precious resource that we have. And if you've got small children going through these challenges, the children are growing. What legacy do you want to leave for your children? You want your children to excel, to thrive. They need time, you know. If they need to do activities, you need money to be able to pay for those activities. But at the same time, you also need time to, you know, to be able to support them through that journey. So like I said, it becomes like a chicken and egg situation. 
should you be working more to get more money to better support them or you know should you spend more time with them but then if you're spending more time and you're broke you still haven't got money for them to do the activities that they need it's very difficult so please please if you're going through any of these challenges and you found um any strat particular strategies that you think you've been so passionate about and you want to share that's absolutely fine um leave a comment in the comment section with any questions you have about any of the things that have been discussed in this video because i know um it, these are difficult conversations to be had, but I think that it is important to have these conversations so that we are all making more informed decisions. That's what this channel is about. I want you to make more informed decisions. It's not me, just, it's not all rosy, you know. If you're in the UK, it's not all rosy. We all know that. Even though sometimes, you know, if you look at social media or you're just sat at home thinking, oh my God, this place in the UK, you think like that in, you know, in paradise. No, it's got its challenges. Yes, we still move on. Yes, we still look for ways of overcoming them. But yes, those challenges are always there. And it's something that we have to acknowledge. You know, we cannot ignore them. Which is why I'm sharing them with you. So that hopefully you gain something from this. Again, if there's any comments, any um, questions that you have, leave them in the comment section below. Um, and I'll join you there to be able to discuss further. Um, like the video just so that I know that you like this type of content. And, you know, I'll just be able to do more of it. Um, so that it can help you to excel, it can help you to thrive, it can help you to get there sooner than some of us who came to this country earlier and we just didn't know a lot of things. So, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep watching.